line The game on the line, you can't fold and you can't bend uh, Y'all be playing it safe and I be going for the win Remember back when they was doubting on the kid uh, Now they tuned in cause my game too legit Hey, what's going on, you guys? Welcome back to Forgiven AF Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Surface. Remember, this is a second chance podcast. We use this for marketing material for our Second Chance Mentors program. You guys know I say this every time, and it's because my guests do get better and better and better. Don't get me wrong. They're all awesome, but um, this one is just a whole different level, you guys. This is definitely, uh, and when I say this, there's no exaggeration, probably the most motivating person that I know um, he's always positive. Christy makes fun of me. She says I have a man crush on him. No homo, but Christy always makes fun of me and says like, Hey, have fun with Jason. She, I think she gets a little bit jealous, but, um, his story is incredible. Um, we're going to go into a book that he wrote a little bit later. Cause that's, uh, something that I recommend everybody gets a part of. But if, uh, real quick, I just want, uh, my buddy Jason Nemes to, uh, kind of explain himself and, um, I hopefully I can get him to share the story about, you know, him growing up and just his life, the things that he's been through and the things that he has not allowed to hold him down that most people wouldn't have gotten back up from. So Jason, thank you for being here, man. Uh, I'm really appreciative. Yes, sir, man. Sean, I, I really appreciate you. Uh, I'm grateful for you, for, for you having me on the podcast. Uh, I'm grateful for your friendship and the words you speak, man. It's a, it's an honor to be here. So thank you very much. Uh, so yeah, man, it's, uh, man, what a journey, you know, just looking back and reflecting on my life, which I do from time to time. The only time you should look back is to see how far you've come. And uh, I look forward to what's coming in the future because it's just a whole new ball game. But um, yeah, so growing up, I mean, I'm from Plano, Texas, and I come from a good family. My parents split up when I was really young. Uh, I was about one years, one year old when when they split. But my dad was always in the picture. My mom, I mean, I was with my mom the majority of the time, and my dad would come pick me up Saturdays and Sundays. So I always had both parents in my life, which I tell both of them still to this day how grateful I am that they didn't use me in like arguments against each other because that does happen. And yeah. It's uh, it's it, that that's a blessing for for me within my uh, within my childhood, <clears throat> and I, yeah. So grew up in Plano, um, was always taught to go to college. So I was in and out of community college after I graduated high school, and man, I just couldn't figure out what I wanted to do. I'm sure people can relate that. Listen, if they're at that level, but. I would like have a full load of class and I would drop all my classes. And then the next semester I would load it up and then I would finish one and like barely pass. You know, it was like, I just, uh, I, I couldn't figure out what it was that I wanted to do. And then I got into sales from 21 to 23. I was, I was doing door to door sales. And I made pretty dang good money. I was living in Newport Beach from 21 to 23. Had a really good time. And man, we lost like everything because they were, we were selling Verizon Fios when it was brand new in, the, in California. So I was in like the Newport Beach market area. And so we didn't get any new leads. They weren't laying any new fiber down. And because of that, there were so, I mean, there was no new leads for us to like knock on doors, and so ran out of money. And I was I spent all my money back then, like all the money I was making, just gone, 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 because I thought it was just gonna keep coming. Like I don't need to save, I just go close some more doors and uh, more money for me. So I ended up living back at my mom's house when I was twenty three, and I talk about that in my book how that went because she ended up kicking me out of the house, which was like the hardest thing for her to do. She was like crying trying to give me money, you know, and I'm like, screw you, I don't need your money. And then I left, I was like, dang it, I should have taken the money. But yeah, and I, it, looking back, I'm, I'm so happy that she did that because it's those kinds of things that made a man out of me. You know, it's like, you got to figure things out. Life is not easy. Uh, it's going to take swings at you. I don't care, rich, poor, you know, the wind blows on all of us. And so I feel like those lessons earlier on in my life truly led me to where I am today. And of course, there were more lessons along the way. 
which I know you want me to talk about some substance abuse things uh, throughout my life. And man, I'll tell you, I, again, I grew up in a great household. Like my father doesn't eat. Like I think I've seen my dad drink two beers in my entire life. My mom will have like a glass of wine at dinner. Like I don't have parents that drink. Neither my grandparents, nothing. And I feel a lot of kids as they grow up, they have this sense of I need to fit in, right? And the quote unquote cool kids are the kids that are goofing off, not doing things that we know we shouldn't be doing, but we again, we feel the need to fit in. And so we go do those things anyways. And that is a problem for adults too. It's like they do, we, we do it as kids, young adults, but it never actually gets away from us. We hold on to that. And it, these are patterns, right? Code of behavior, which is the title of my book, best selling book. The code of behavior. How are you living? What code are you living by? Are you hanging out with people that aren't matching your future? You know, we, everybody wants to do these great things in life, but their actions on a day to day basis are completely against where they're wanting to be in life. And so that's what the code of behavior my book really gets into and dives deep is what code have you been living by? Who are you hanging out with? How do you spend your day? What's your daily routine, right? That's our code. And uh, most people don't look at it that way, but now they will because of my book, right? And so now it's like, okay, where am I at in life? What's the code I've been living by? Where do I want to go in life? Where do I want to be? And then identifying the code that we need to live by to get those results that we seek in life. Dude, that's so good. I'm going to interrupt you real quick here. Every time you talk, it's like, I just want to say like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Like I want to jump in and start talking because like I really feel like my substance abuse issues came 100% from the need to, from like that want to fit in. Yep. Um, my drug dealing came from that f wanting to be the man, wanting to be important, wanting to be needed. It's so funny when you hit on stuff like that. So real quick, because there's more of the story that I want you to get to, which is like really <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Um, but when I first met you, there were like three or four things that you were like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do this. And I can like, and you were so adamant about what you were going to do. And I was just meeting you and I was like, man, this guy is either like delusional or he's <laughs> like, like really that confident about this stuff, bro. And you have done every single one of those things. And in the middle of them, you literally died. Like, I just got chills. Like you literally died. Yeah. Like like you have done every, it, like it, I have chills too because there's that's what I'm trying to say when I want to explain how motivated you are. You've literally done every single thing that you told me you were gonna do, and you died in between there. Like and people don't understand what I'm saying right now, but can you kind of will you elaborate on that a little? Yeah, bit? Yeah, I, I will. And before I touch on that, I just gotta say. Comparison is the thief of joy. I, I just have to say that because I forgot that conversation. There are certain things that just stick with us. And I guess that conversation that we had, those things stuck with you. For me, I didn't even remember that. And it's easy for us to beat ourselves up thinking that we should be so much farther ahead. And it's because of who we're comparing ourselves to. I mean, I hang out with like nothing but multimillionaires and I'm like, golly, you know, like I'm so hungry. It's, I know I'm going to get there. And sometimes I, I feel myself getting a little bit down, like, man, I should be farther ahead. But then to hear you say that, it's like, what a reality check. And I mean, what happened with the dying was a reality check too, about how we live our life and having an attitude of gratitude and the things that we think about. But yeah, it was just cool to hear you say that because it's like, man, I really, you know, it wasn't that long ago, maybe five or six years ago, that I had all of these goals and I was speaking, speaking them aloud, what I was going to do. And man, I really, I put my head down for the most part and I got to work and I achieved them. So it's like, man, the people, for the people that are listening, understand it's like, what are you focused on? What are those thoughts that you're thinking are... Are you comparing yourselves to a bunch of people on social media, which I talk about this in my book too, because you got to understand there's a social media life and there's a real life. Everybody smiles on social media and talks about how incredible things are. And we get caught up comparing ourselves to people's social media life when 
a lot of times, and it's a sad thing, but it's true, a lot of times people are actually depressed. And you're over here comparing yourself to a smile that they posted on their social media thinking like, oh man, my life sucks. Because you're looking at these people really deep down, they're unhappy with their life. Dude, my last episode that I posted last week, I yeah. went all in on how I... I look like this amazing father on Instagram, all these pictures with me and my son, all these things that I do with my son. I post the pictures, but I, and I said, but I don't post when I'm sitting there scrolling and my son's going, daddy, daddy, daddy. And I'm just basically ignoring him because I'm scrolling. You know what I mean? Right. Like I post all the things that make me look like this amazing father, mm -hmm. but not when I'm not doing the things that I should be doing. Of course. You know what I mean? So oh yeah. We don't, we don't post that stuff. I'll tell you, there's a lot of stuff in my life that I haven't posted. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that's funny. So you want me to go into the story dude? I of, of, of all days, Easter, man, yeah, that right there is Easter 2021. <clears throat> yeah. So just so you know, uh, what I'm about to tell you is self-inflicted for the most part. So Easter 2021, I was living in Austin, Texas, and I went, I had a buddy of mine, a couple buddies that wanted me to hit some legs with them. I guess more so like train them, but work out together. So drive out to the gym, we hit the leg workout, and then they wanted to go play basketball. One of the guys that I worked out with, he was a bad, like, bad ace a bad ace basketball player back in the day, like, and he still plays. He's really, really good and uh, played college and everything. But I, I mean, I have a really good shot. And so he wanted to play it like around the world. So we played and I beat him and he didn't like it too much, but I had to go. So I knew that he wanted a rematch. And so he brought up him getting a rematch. You know, when we got done hitting legs, he's like, hey man, let's go, let's go have another uh, around the world match. And I was like, all right, cool. So we get down there and there's these three other dudes on the court, right? And so, and they're on the other side of the court. So we're shooting around. And then these guys, they want to play three on three. Mind you, I was 245 pounds at the time. I was in the bulk phase. This was April 4th. And I was actually going to start cutting April 15th. So I'm not doing really, I'm not doing cardio. Uh, I've got low top shoes on. Not in shape to play basketball. But I said, okay, because I was the third, you know, for the three on three, they needed me to play. And the competitive side, I was like, let's get it. So we play and I'm having some trouble breathing while we're playing, but I'm not thinking anything of it. I'm thinking it's because I'm out of shape, you know, I mean, yeah. that's what anybody would think. So deep breaths, deep breaths. So we get done playing three games and we start to leave the gym like start to exit. It was Lifetime Fitness in, uh, in Austin. And I start getting some pains in my chest, a really bad headache, my arms going numb, and I'm having trouble breathing. Like I'm still, you know, it's okay. This is probably 10 minutes after playing. I've cooled down. So by now my, my breath should be back to normal. You know, I should have, should have returned to how it normally is, but it didn't. Get in the car and start driving. And everything is getting worse. Like every, every symptom is getting worse. And so I stop at a gas station because I'm like, something's not right. Okay. Stop at the gas station, get some Advil because I had, th this headache was like excruciating. Take the Advil, start driving back to the house. And I mean, everything is like, it's getting really bad now. So I've got a pinch nerve in my neck from my bodybuilder days. And so sometimes my arm will go numb throughout the day already. So I'm like I'm trying to adjust in my car, you know, to maybe like maybe I'm pinching the nerve where it's causing my arm to go numb, but that wasn't the case. So I was like, in my mind, I'm like, I got to get to an ER clinic, you know, actually. So, yeah. So the person I was with in the car, I, I looked at her and I was like, yo, something is not right. I want to go to an ER clinic. And she's like, cool, let's go. And just so y'all know, normally... There's crazy traffic in Austin, like horrible. But because it was Easter, there were no cars on the road. It's so cool how everything just aligned. Like exactly, if it were any different, I, I wouldn't be alive today. I mean, they told me 60 second window and I wouldn't have made it. Like literally to the minute, one minute is what they said. So I get to the clinic, I run inside. Keep in mind, it's not a hospital, it's like an urgent care. I get there, run in, 
They're like, sir, how can we help you? I said, man, I'm pretty sure I'm having a heart attack. And he looked at me and asked me for my ID. And I still joke around about it because it's like, I just told you I'm pretty sure I'm having a heart attack and you're asking me for my ID. Like, can you just get me to the back and deal with that later? So I actually left my wallet in the car. (laughs) I had to run back out. Mind you, I'm having a massive heart attack the whole time. So I run back out to the car. I get my wallet. I come back, give him my ID. He did spare me with the paperwork. He let he let that be filled out later on, which was so nice of him, right? But yeah, so they rushed me to the back, and I'll never forget the look on the doctor's face. Because so they got me to the back and they hooked me up to an EKG, which is where the, it's like a machine that reads what's going on with the heart. So they hook everything up to me, and I'll never forget when he looked at that, like his face when he saw what that read. He looked at me and he was like, man, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you're suffering a severe heart attack right now. Keep in mind, this is my second heart attack. Okay, I had another heart attack, but it only lasted 45 to 60 seconds. Like it went and it went away. It stopped. It was very minor. And so in my mind, I'm like, man, doctors just exaggerate stuff. That, that, this is what I'm thinking. And I'm huge on mindset and like what we're, what we're telling ourselves, you know, what you think about comes about. And the where we put energy grows. So, um, like, why would we put energy in things that are negative? Because that will expand, right? So I'm over here like, oh, man, this is just another another simple heart attack. I'll be out of here in 45, 60 minutes. Y'all, and I had this, like, epiphany because I had this epiphany, like, two weeks ago, and I talked about it when I spoke in Canada. People were cracking up. But... And, and I, you know, and I pray that none of y'all have anything like this happen, but, f- you know, God forbid, if you do, don't do what I did. So I texted my mom in the middle of it while I'm laying on the, on the, uh, it's not a bed, but like the little thing that you lay in on, like you lay down on when you go to the ER clinics. I'm laying there. They have the EKG still hooked up. They're giving me like all this medicine to take. And I'm on my phone. I text my mom. I say, mom, I'm having a severe heart attack right now. And I put my phone down. It's like my mom's probably losing her ever living mind on in another subject. So we lost my little brother uh, December 26, 2019. He was 28. And that was my that was my mother's only other child. So like she's got me, you know, we have my stepsister. But as far as blood, like I'm the last, you know, and here I am texting her. Yo, I have, I'm having a severe heart attack right now. I put my phone down. Like she, now she can't get a hold of me because I don't have my phone. So, yeah, I, I don't recommend doing that. <clears throat> but I heard she actually stayed very calm. She came to the, she found out where I was at, came to the ER clinic and stayed show. But so I'm laying on this bed thing and I'm communicating with the people in my room, which they probably had like every nurse and doctor in that clinic in my room, and they're all doing something different giving me different medicines to chew, to swallow, checking different machines, all the different stuff they're doing. I don't know. I'm just, and I'm communicating with them while they're doing that. Like, okay, I, I'm a little bit better now. My my breath is coming back to me. Okay, the pain is, is going away. And then it's like, oh man, the pain's back. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. And it, it's so crazy thinking back because I literally felt me losing my breath. And I, I remember as I took my last breath, and I, I told them, I was like, y'all got to do something. Please help me. And I asked God to help me at the very end. Y'all got to do something. Please help me. God, please help me. And and that's where I died on the table. That's where I flatlined. Uh, they said I was out for about 40 seconds. So I was done right there. And, it's, and no, I did not have an out-of-body experience. And I'll tell you this. I took that, you know, and you, you can create something out of anything. But for me... I looked at it as I don't have a close enough relationship to God because I literally went to sleep. It was black. I didn't see a white light. It wasn't like you go to heaven and you get sent back down. I, I, I've heard some crazy stories and everything was black, like darkness. So I was like, man, I got to get closer to God. So my life has completely shifted you know, f- f- where I am now, which has been one of the biggest blessings that I've ever experienced in my life. So I want y'all to understand that in the midst of darkness it is like incredible opportunity uh, where you're going to get your greatest moments. And don't forget that the sun begins to rise at the darkest part of the night.
Yeah, buddy. Good. That's good. Okay, so so I'm out for 40 seconds, and out of nowhere, I hear Jason, Jason. And I, I can't, like, all I just hear my name. Like, my eyes won't open. And then I open my eyes, and I look to my right, and the doc's like, welcome back. And I'm like, huh? And then he, he, was, he pointed to the, to the nurse next to me, and he's like, she just saved your life. And I was dumbfounded, and I'm trying to, like, grasp what he just said to me. You know, she just saved your life. And so I look over, and I'm like, you just saved my life? And she's like, yeah. And I was like, man, you know, th- like, what do you say? It's like, thank you so much, right? I just couldn't stop thanking her. Her name was Debbie. I remember I talked about how everything aligned perfect. So Debbie is a nurse who normally works in the hospital, in the ER unit of the hospital, specializing in heart attacks. And she just happened to be there. She's there about twice a month, you know, a couple times a month. And she happened to be there, and she was the one who defibbed me and did CPR on me and brought me back to life. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, try not to get emotional. I'm over here trying not to get emotional. Yeah, I see, I see. It's <laughs> like, man, it, it, it's, you know, it, a year and a half ago, and, I mean, sometimes I tell the story and I'm just bawling my eyes out. Because, I mean, bro, like, I died on that table. I mean, it's... It's so crazy to even say, and, you know, I, I was 35 and my brother was 28. And one of the biggest problems with people is that they think they have so much time to succeed. It's, it's like we don't think that death is near. We think we've got all this time in the world and that you can just put things off. You can put off your goals. You're going to wake up. You're not going to do crap. You're not going to do anything that's going to lead you to where you want to go. You're going to go hang out with a bunch of knuckleheads that aren't serving any purpose in your life. It's like, how do you expect to get where you want to be? So good. Yeah, man. It's, it's just, uh, and it's not confusing. It's not complicated, I guess I should say. Success is not complicated. People just complicate it. Dude, you literally, this book, right? And I don't mean to switch speed. No, no, you're good. I don't, like this book, I've read a lot of like self-help books, mm-hmm. a, a lot of them. I actually want at the end have some recommendations because I know that you are huge into um, what do you, what did you call the word self when you're trying to study to make yourself better what is the personal development personal development yeah, yeah. self development personal development personal development right. is definitely the term you have pushed personal development as long as I've known you right and yes. I think that's something that you've learned from mentors and stuff mm-hmm. bro I've read a lot of books like this and I swear this is by far and it was hard let me be fully transparent here. You know how when you know somebody like on a friendly level and they put something out and you're like, man, how good could this book yeah, really be? I'm going to be sure. honest. Yeah. That went through my mind. I was like, how good could this book really be? Bro, I was absolutely blown away. Thank I you. read this during 75 Hard. Mm-hmm. This book is probably one of the reasons I got through 75 Hard. First of all, you're the first person that I know that actually finished 75 Hard. Yeah, I saw try. 50 people, bro, 50 people start posting day three day seven and then that was it and that's it and that was Mm -hmm. it i made it through the entire program my wife let's go baby thank you that was yeah that was something that was probably one of my biggest accomplishments that was super hard super freaking hard but i swear in his book he says you'll start not even accepting excuses from other people once you and i do now every time i hear someone at the gym or someone with something i'm like that's you know what i mean but anyways back to this book not only is this book um amazing in the content that it offers it's so actually like practical like you can read this book right now and you can already have the tools that you need to put this stuff into motion some of these books are kind of like real like theoretical Mm -hmm. and and kind of like far out or this book is like literally every chapter i read i was like i can implement this right now and there's stuff you fill out at the end of each chapter i even have that written down yeah and then i've got a course with a workbook as well uh, but and there's also the assessment that you can take the co- the code of behavior assessment, dude. It's so. it's. I'm not just saying this because you're my friend. This book is absolutely amazing. Like yeah, I mean I that. It. I'm not just saying that because you're my friend and because you're here. Um, there's some things you kind of started with this when you started. Um, do your cur- current disciplines align with the life that you claim you want? Mm-hmm. And that was one that hit me so hard. It's like I see where I want to be, like where I want my life to end up. But am, is what I'm doing right now? gonna get me there like most people i think the answer is gonna be no you gotta be psychotic 
it, it, day in and day out. I mean, you like where do you want to go? And hopefully it's in like incredible places and you want to do things that people laugh when you tell them. I mean, you got to be nuts. Yeah, I, dude, I thought that about you when you first told me all the yeah, stuff you were going to do. Yeah, and, and now I'm, I'm, I'm turning it up. Like, and, it, yeah, it's, and you've already, so that was one. Um, the second one that I want to touch real quick, I'm just, I just took a couple things that hit me real hard, okay? So I don't want to, because I don't want to give away the whole book. I yeah, want, for sure. Um, everyone always talks about goal setting, goal setting, goal setting, goal setting, which I love. It's important, right? But what is goal setting if you don't believe you can? Right. Right. Like, I mean, that's just you can write goals down all day long. But if you don't really believe you can accomplish those goals, what do you have? Something on a piece of paper that you w a wish. Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. So that was freaking mind blowing. And then um, the last one that I'm going to share a nugget out of this book that I messaged you right when I read it. <laughs> I don't know if you know which one it is. This one to me is a life hack in communication with somebody. And I don't know if you, if you made this up, bro, like I, this blows me away every time. And it's stop trying to be interesting and be interested. Yeah. Like, I, I didn't make it up, uh, but it's something I live by. God, it's so good. Cause we just go around. We want to tell everybody about ourselves and we want to be the ones talking and we want to tell everything we're doing. But it, it kind of takes me back to that saying, uh, people don't care about what you know, people or people care about how you made them feel people don't care how much you know until they know how much you, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care yeah that one or yeah, yeah. you know what i mean it's like because it's just like when you just talk about yourself all the time what are you learning through that you're not learning anything you already know about yourself right, right. Mm -hmm. so i just thought that that was awesome and i just think that that was uh something that like just our culture needs to know more of like be interested see what you can learn from what someone else right does. people are fascinating yeah I'm going to uh, finish really quickly on the story of the heart attack. Oh, did I? Sorry. Yeah. No, 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 it's okay. Because there's... I would love you to finish. When I was in ICU, there was like major awakening. Let's go. Yeah. So they woke me up. The paramedics were there, like ready to take me. So they wake me up. They get me loaded onto the stretcher thing. They, you know, they rush me to the hospital. They do emergency surgery. They put a stent in, at, you know, and, and, uh, and just so y'all know, like the, the level of miracle... That it is. I had a hundred percent blockage at my widowmaker. They call it the widowmaker because if somebody has a heart attack, there's somebody's about to be a widow. People don't survive it. Mine was over two hours. So the it, the widowmaker is the LED artery. It's the left part of the heart, the left side, and that's the part of the heart that funnels the entire body of oxygen and blood flow. So if that gets cut off, your body is not getting oxygen and blood flow to it. Okay. So they get me up. They rush me to the hospital, get the surgery, done in 15 minutes, get transferred over to ICU. And man, it was just like nothing but reflection time. Uh, and it's funny too, because I started working like really fast. Like once I, after like an hour or so, I'm like back to my phone, like checking up on people and, and people are blowing me up because I mean, word got out, what happened, you know? And uh, so, yeah, it, and it's funny too, because I would just sit in ICU and look out the window and be like, oh my gosh, those trees are so green. I bet. Like, oh, look at those birds and the blue sky, right? It's like a whole new perspective of life. You really appreciate just everything around you. And I'll never forget. So what's cool, remember, I, I died on Easter. So the third day, I get transferred out of ICU. And in order to get discharged from the hospital, they got to come run some scans on my heart to see what's up. And I'll tell you, the mind wants to go negative. We have got to purposefully be positive. So, because they're not going to let me leave if there's some complications, right? They want to keep me and make sure they monitor me. So my mind started going to like, oh, man, what if something happened? You know, what if I, my heart, and I was like, no, 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 no. We got to stop that. You know, if I'm putting energy there, it's going to grow. I'm like, screw that. I'm good, baby. We are good. It's just another speed bump. I'm going to tell this story all over the world, and it's going to be phenomenal, right? So they come like three hours later, which no problem. They come about three hours later. They have the machines. So they did the test. No damage to my heart and pump function normal as if nothing happened. God, that's so crazy. So I was talking to somebody last week. His buddy had a Widowmaker heart attack. He's blind. Can't even see. And a lot of people, like, their legs don't work. You know what I'm saying? Because you got no blood flow. And I literally wa I walked out of the hospital in scrubs like the Joker from the Dark Knight. <laughs> I'm like, it is nuts, bro. 
And I, I get home and I, I'll never forget going into my closet. I was living in a high rise spot, high rise um, in Austin, downtown. I think and we went there. Christy and I went there, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was it the two bedroom though? This was the two bedroom. You had switched to another one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was a two bedroom. So I just, I'll never forget going into my closet and seeing all of my stuff. Cause we get caught up in like our shoes and our clothes. And it's like, we try to find happiness there, which don't get me wrong. I like to wear nice things, but your happiness can't be from that. You know what I'm saying? And so, man, I was just looking around like this stuff almost didn't matter. You know, like it's good. And I, you can't take that with you. Right. And, uh, and again, don't get me wrong. Again, I, I love nice things. I, I've got, you know, nice car, nice clothes, jewelry, but you just can't put your happiness there Yeah. because you can lose it all. Like I've had to rebuild my business twice. I've lost like everything multiple times. And if your happiness lies in stuff, then if you lose your stuff, you're going to go get depressed. You're like, you can't do that. Yeah. You got to keep keep a positive mindset so you can go rebuild it if needed. That's really good. Yeah. That's really good. I don't want to forget this point. There's what I see in the whole when it comes to the way that you came back um, is clearly God has a huge. Oh, man. And that, that's what I took from it. Like, that's what I see. Like, and I see that in you anyway, but I definitely feel like and I don't want you to feel like, you know, when you said like it was dark and it made me feel like I need to have a more better relate. I don't think God wanted to show you yet what his afterlife was going to be like. I, I don't feel like I know you love Jesus. We've talked about this tons of times. Yeah. I don't feel like don't ever beat yourself up thinking that like my relationship wasn't good enough because you were going to go to heaven. You know what I mean? Right. Like a hundred percent. You believe in Jesus. That's all that matters to get you to heaven. Well, beforehand I didn't. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, so half my family's Jewish and okay. half my family's Christian. And so I was always in this weird dynamic of, I don't want to have the other families upset with me. You know, if I lean this way, then they're going to be pissed off. Hey, I if I lean this way, they're going to be upset with me. Right. Yeah. And it's like every year I was with my family, like Thanksgiving and Christmas. I'm with my Christian family. Like I didn't spend there wasn't a lot of time spent in my adulthood with the Jewish side of my family. It was pretty much always with my Christian side. Like Thanksgiving this year, going to there. Like my first cousin's name is Christian, right? Yeah. And so to have all of this happen, that okay. changed. Then everything. maybe, then you're right in what you said then. Yeah. Then you're right. And you know what? A lot of people aren't given that second chance. Yeah, bro. But it, it's funny that you said that because that's actually what I normally say is that everything happening the way it did and how everything aligned, like I say, God waking me up truly woke me up. Oh, that's God good. waking me up that day woke me up, right? That's good. I, for me, I know that I have bigger plans than I ever imagined, that God has bigger plans for me than I ever realized. And it's like, now that I'm here, no problems, everything's good, living my life, it's like I'm on a mission to spread the word, you know, and just to help people be of massive contribution and help as many people as I can. Dude, and, that's, and you are that way. Like, there's so many different times I've reached out to you for help on different stuff, and you've never, you've shared resources every time. You know every I mean? time, which, man. Which is really cool, because a lot of people aren't like that. A lot of people are going to hog their resources for whatever they can get out of it. You know what I mean? So man, there's a, this, it's a world of abundance. And if, if, if somebody operates in that space, that, that's a scarcity mindset. So code of behavior, how you do anything is how you do everything. If you have a scarcity mindset in that aspect, you're going to have scarcity mindset in other places in your life. And I don't have room for scarcity. And money won't flow or no, purpose, will purpose will not flow through scarcity. That's right. That's really good. I'm sorry that I went into the book without you finishing. Oh, no, no, no. It's fine. It's I'm glad fine, you yeah. finished it because I just, I wasn't sure where you're at. We started both of, I was about to cry. You were about to cry. And then we were like, okay, let's, let's move yeah. paces. But I can't imagine. Thank you for sharing that. I know that sure. that story is going to have impact to every one of our listeners. And, um, sorry if I pressured you like to do that, but I just, no worries. And, and we can bring this up too, that I had talked about, it was self-inflicted. So we can talk more about that. Cause I know you wanted to man for years. I was on steroids and for years on uh, cocaine. And I mean, obviously it's not a good mix. You shouldn't do either of them, but definitely not together. Yeah. And we're talking for years, right? <sighs> so every year I would get an annual checkup. I would always have blood work done every time and it'd be perfect every single time. So in my mind, I'm like, I'm freaking Superman. <laughs> you know, nothing can take me down. I'll continue living this life. 
And uh, sure enough, it caught me. Well, wow, that really scares me, actually. I mean, I don't do drugs anymore, but I, I do take, you know, but that's different. You're not talking like just regular TRT, a, a, right? A, a TRT is not taking okay. steroids. Okay. Like that's, that's a medical thing where you're at a normal range, right? Yeah. If you do something that helps, something that your body already produces, but it's not able to produce enough, and you do it to put yourself in a normal range, okay. that's cool. But if you're double the normal range, three times the normal range, now it's not normal for your body, so that's not good. Okay, thank you yeah. for that explanation. Yeah, for sure. Big difference. Yeah, because I was like, yeah. that's good. Um, let me see. You had kind of already touched on this. I only have two more pieces, and I'm... Yeah, cool. Um. What last thing I want to say about this book is at the end of each chapter, there's like actual practical steps and stuff to, and it's not like a like workbook where you're all like just having to answer nonsense. Like right. they're all like questions that you need to, even if you don't write it down, you need to actually think about them. That was my way. I read them, I thought about my answer to them, um, and so that's really good. There's you get a lot out of that. The last thing that I want to ask you is, and I didn't even prep you for this, so I don't. We'll see how this uh -oh. goes. Well, yeah, we'll see how this goes. Um, I'm, I was gonna say three pieces. It doesn't even matter, need to be three pieces. It could be one. It could be two. It could be three. It could be a hundred. Um, advice for, you know, we're meant. I have a mentorship program, right? So a lot of these kids are 16 to 20 year old. Um, a lot of them are kind of lacking purpose. They don't really know exactly what they want to do. What advice would you have for, um, or what would you have told yourself at 18, as a, with what you know now, that would have kind of like given you like an edge up or a little bit of like. So it's funny because. There's like memes that get posted a lot on Facebook, Instagram, right? And uh, dang, what, what was it? It was like four words that you would say to somebody trying to succeed. Or it's four word, whatever. And my thing was always find a good mentor. So it's cool that you're running that mentoring, that mentorship program. And that, no, we did not plan that. <laughs> that, was really, that was awesome, yeah. But here's the thing. It's like, okay, when I look at a mentor, right? even in my, my own life, right? When I look at a mentor, it's gonna be somebody that I don't wanna let down, somebody that I highly respect, and somebody who is where I want to be in life. And I'm gonna to go to guidance for, and you know, I'll, I'll have mentors, different people that mentor me in different things. Some people can be like extremely successful at business and they're single. So I'm not going to go to them for marriage advice That's good. or relationship advice. I'm going to go over here to somebody who might, you know, they might not make a six, seven, eight figure income. However, they've been married 20 years and they're extremely happy. I'm going to go talk to them about marriage advice or a couple, you know, relationship yeah, advice. That's good. So somebody you highly respect, you don't want to let down, and they're highly successful in whatever it is that you're seeking success in. That's awesome. Yeah, I appreciate it. That's so really good. Yeah, I mean, I've got incredible mentors in my life, man, and it's changed everything for me. And I'll tell you this too. Cool story because it's a cool story, but it's not in regards to myself because uh, – there were some things that got back to my main mentor. I was it's, I was wondering if you yeah, were going to this. Yeah, man. And uh, he blocked my number. And you really cared about this dude. Like you and his, man, like, I would take a bullet for him. Yeah. Like no joke. I was at his house last week. We're really close again. Like really close. But yeah, so the story was like I was doing a lot of things behind closed doors and he was mentoring me at that time. But I was afraid to tell him, it's funny how it works, because I was afraid to tell him like things that I was battling and what I was doing because I was afraid he would judge me and then stop talking to me, right? So honesty is oh, like, just be up front. And I got the same result either way, but now I got the result in regard, it, I'm, I'm lying to him. You know, before it's like, at least I would have been a man and been up front and told him the truth because every mentor call, he would start out, how's Jason doing, right? How are you doing? Because if you're not well, then nothing else in your life is going to be well. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we got to make sure we're good and then everything else can flow. Yeah. So now it's like, I would always say, I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. And then it was like, I'd be, you know, an hour later, I'm going and doing cocaine. But and so he told me. We got, I'll, I'll slow it down before the he told me part. So I saw him at a, 
uh, at a training, we'll say. I saw him at a training and I went and talked to him. I was like, hey, man, I know you blocked me. I would really like the chance to take you to lunch and just talk. And he said, cool, I will do that, right? I didn't make any excuses. And here's the thing. I owned up to everything. I, didn't, I don't even know what people told him. But he's like, man, I got a phone call about you. He goes, and when I was told what you were doing, I was like, Jason? Nah, there's no way. Not Jason. I know Jason. And then I got a call from another person and then another person. And I'm like, who the heck is calling him? Why don't you call me and check on me versus calling him and telling on me, right? So he was like, man, after I heard it from so many people, I was just like, okay, maybe he is. And I felt I was hurt. I felt like you lied to me. You wasted my time. He's like, man, people all over the world beg to work with me. They like beg for the relationship that you and I have built. And I just feel, man, like you wasted my time. And when I felt, dude, that was like a dagger, bro. Because again, I would take a bullet for this dude. I mean, he's done so much in my life and has helped me so much for free. Just because we had that relationship. So I called him. I was like, look, man, I don't know what you heard. You know, we talked, we talked on the phone. We didn't get to do lunch at that point yet, but we did have like a 30-minute conversation. And he he was just like, or I told him, I said, I don't know what you were told. I don't, I'm not even gonna, I don't care to get into it, but I will tell you, here's the things that that I was doing. Again, I didn't know what if he was even told these things, but I owned up to it. I said, I'm not gonna make any excuses. All I can do is tell you from here on out, moving forward, it'll never happen again. You have my word. And so he goes, Okay, I'll unblock you. Just Keep doing the right thing. You know, it's like, you know what the right thing is. Keep doing the right thing. So kept doing the right thing, and he's, we're, good. we're still very, very close. That's, so being People. honest and accepting responsibility yeah. was a huge... Even if you're afraid of the outcome. Yeah. Because, again, I lied to him, and it got back to him, and he stopped talking to me. Where I could have at least been uh, maintained that honor and been up front with him, but I was so scared. No, that's good. Yeah. And it is hard. It's hard, but... Honesty, you're always going to get, at least you don't have to have that feeling of shame. You Man, know what I mean? It, it was so bad. Uh, how do, um, what's the best way for people to find you and to find if they want to buy the book? Yeah, so my book, most people get it on Amazon. You just go to Amazon, type in the code of behavior. And my name is Jason Nemes. It's N is a Nancy, E, M is a Mary, E, S is in Sam. And then I've also got a website, jasonlnemis.com. And pretty much on all social media platforms, I think, it's uh, Tatted Prez. T-A-T-T-E-D, as in tatted, tattooed. And then Prez, P-R-E, and then three Zs. Tatted awesome. Prez. Hey, will you sign this for me? Absolutely. I thought you'd never ask. I think Christy was going to make fun of me, but I was like, I'm going to ask him to sign it on the Heck podcast. Yeah, I think dude. that'd be really cool. I was actually going to give you another one with a long note. What's the date? Oh, 11-11. 11, 11. 11, 11? Yeah, so yeah, 11-11. 11, 11, and this is podcast 11. Episode 11. Episode 11, yeah. And it's my main angel number, 11, 11. And I got this done in Australia. How cool is that, yeah, man? man? That's just another sign from God that we're, we're walking in the right direction. I feel like he shows us stuff like that. You know what I mean? To say, hey, man, you're, you're Always. doing the right thing. Bro. Always. Thank you so much. Of course, bro. I, I love appreciate you, you, man. Love you're, you too. You're doing awesome things, man. I love watching you. I love being able to have interactions like this. I love being able to reach out to you. Um, you guys, I just want to let you know before we wrap this up, do you have anything you want to say before we're done? We're good. We're good, man. You, you think, yeah. I don't think, I, I think this will have a lot of impact, man. Your story is awesome and the way you communicate is awesome. Um, remember, you guys, that uh, you're loved, you're forgiven, and there's nothing you can do about it. So we'll see you next week. Yeah.